And there are many types of farms, obviously, out there in the world. We see so many types. You could have vegetable farms, you could have animal farms, you could have tree farms, flower farms, worm farms, ant farms, every conceivable thing that you could uh, make a lot of and you find a market for or a use for yourself, uh, you could create a farm for. And I wanted to, I want to focus on the two main parts of farm, the two main types of farms, that being animal farming. George Arwell could probably give you a few insights on that one. But animal farming um, and vegetable farming. Now, the main difference with the animal farming, of course, you have animals instead of vegetables, but is your amount of time, your amount of responsibility goes up just uh, exponentially with an animal farm. You've got to be aware of that. Yeah, you thought it would be nice and romantic to keep a, uh, to keep a horse or a cow or pigs or chickens plucking around the yard. But keep in mind, it's your responsibility to keep them fed well and nutritionally and, and happily on a daily basis, the same as you eat, the same as we all eat. Um, that is your responsibility now. And to rely on your yard to have enough uh, nutrition or your leftovers on your farm to do it, um, you may find out that uh, they've rotted or the rains have washed them away or, or they've been pilfered or something has occurred. Well, you're still responsible to feed those animals. So you are not only a, a, a police person on the scene, um, but you're an, a caregiver, a nurturer, a healer, um, um, a husband when, when it comes time to give birth. And all of these factors and more are, are yours when you take on animals versus the, uh, the vegetables. Um, what you see here is a, is a post-monsoon planting of, of a long-term crop with, with post-monsoon crop Vegetables can be left for a while on their own. They're quite happy to be uh, uh, with, with you gone, actually. And with us now on the fake book and, and all of our pushes and pulls socially and the encouragement to be inactive or to be selfish, me, 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 and freedom, freedom, independence, and all of that, we want to take off and we want to go. We want to be mobile, being world traveler myself. I understand this. To have a vegetable garden, this is possible. It is not possible with an animal farm unless you've got somebody else in the community that can uh, take up your responsibility and take care of the animals while you're gone or you hire staff. So you're bringing in a resource necessity there, resource load on top of what you've already got to have the animals. Versus the vegetables, you go ahead and Put your resource in the soil, have more standing by or composting, um, have access to it uh, fresh locally always. And um, so the subsoil is happy. You plant your seeds biodynamically, take advantage of the rhythm. And so you're in good position to let them, to give those a good, happy childhood and life in their own environments here. And you can take off for stretches of time and do your thing and come back and still pick up and if it hasn't rained, well, you, you know, you take care of the drought there, you water and, and do whatever you, is necessary. If there's an in, insect infestation, you get your proper treatments in there. And by the way, we will have to eventually talk about the biodynamic treatments. I have not forgotten those uh, in the course of biodynamics and of bioorganic farming. <clears throat> but just to let you know that these, these two main farmings, are a bit of at an odds with each other resource-wise. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The animal farming has a tremendous resource responsibility. It needs a tremendous resource, uh, amount of resource. Your resource balance is thrown way out of kilter if you've got several cows, for example, and not so much land. If you've got too much land and not enough cows, you cannot produce enough manure to organically maybe uh, nutrify your ground, you need more cows. But to get more cows, you've got a vicious circle where you've got to produce your produce on site to get to those cows, to feed them on a daily basis, fresh, organic, nutri nutritional produce, or else you've got to find it nearby. Now you can bring external inputs 
In other words, outside your boundaries, but still locally, grasses, weeds, all this kind of thing. You can bring baskets in there on a daily basis and, and pick up the resource load there for your cows and feed them on a regular basis. And then you don't quite need so much land uh, for, your, uh, for your responsibility towards the animals. And this can be done, and that is done here at 5 EOB Farm. Um, and it is done, I think, in most places in the world. They use their context environment um, to help their reality, their responsibility factor on their animal farms. And most farms in the world are a combination of animal and vegetable farm working in some sort of a balance. And they know what the number is that works for them in every context. And it is for every farmer to learn on their own what their balance number is. Something that I, I cannot teach you, and I'm not running from it, but unfortunately, this is something that experience alone is going to show you. So that's a little bit of a dialogue about farming, and I'm hoping that uh, we will just roll right along with the rest of the lectures here, and that you can uh, do more commenting. If there's something you don't agree upon, something you don't you resent, something that uh, you do agree upon, you have your own insights, your own experiences to add in. Please comment so that we can, I can do maybe later lectures on these things. We can talk together about these. Let's not be strangers. Let's not be separate entities all poking in on one course. Let's, let's get together and create dialogue and make it a better course because I need to know what you're thinking out there. And so for this course to continue with, with any amount of, uh, of a real integrity, I've got to hear, I've got to have feedback from you. I've got to know what are your concerns. So hopefully we'll continue with the lectures and uh, we'll go from here.